not as far-fetched as it may seem. In fact, both local San Francisco papers are investing a lot of money to try and get a service just like that started. Science editor Steve Newman reports on one person already using the brand new system. What is up, my dudes? It's the Reddit Fairy. I bet you didn't think I was going to be back so soon, but like I said, I'm on vacation, so... Today, we're going to get into some r slash entitled kids. So sit back and relax, and let's get into some of the most cringiest entitled kids stories. Invincible Kid Lies Refuses to Leave Apartment Gets His Ass Handed to Him by Adults Sorry for the long post, but this happened literally two days ago. I made this account just for this post. I'm going to vent. Please enjoy. So, some background for this story. My boyfriend and I decided to move in together and we knew we would need some roommates. Conveniently, his sister and her boyfriend were also moving, so we got an apartment together. We got along really well, and that point in time was probably the best family bonding experience I could have asked for. However, sister's boyfriend came to us one day saying that his friend, known as Kid, was kicked out of his parents' house and needing a place to stay. We agreed that he could sleep on the couch. That was our biggest mistake in the first place, of course. After some time, too much time, honestly, the five of us decided to rent a home in which we would all have rooms. We all come up with the money and rent a really nice town home for a decent price. That is when kids started to show his true colors. Fiance and myself had a conversation with him one night where he literally said, Dude, I get away with so much crap. I am invincible. Cops have pulled me over for so much and I get away with it. He would do nothing around the house. I would ask him to put away the dishes and he would roll his eyes and go upstairs to his room. Sister would ask him to clean up their shared bathroom, and he would yell at her that he didn't have time. You get the idea. Grade A++ jerk. After the first month of staying at this townhome, we were having a birthday party for my now fiancé, his 21st. For some stupid reason, a group of random people thought it would be a great idea to break into our townhome, all while this party is happening. I'm not kidding. They busted down the door and immediately turned around when they saw a living room full of guys over six foot two. We had to call the police and they brought dogs to search. All the neighbors were watching. There were four cop cars and dogs searching the grounds. You get the picture. Sister was greatly affected and refused to come back to the townhome after leaving the night of the break-in. I felt completely unsafe and I did not want to be home alone. So we decided to break the lease. This is a general, a hassle in general. We put in a notice to the front office and let them know that we will be leaving in 30 days. Fiance and I immediately find a place and we're out from day one. Due to stress from the break-in and stress and other relationship issues, sister and her boyfriend split and went separate ways, both finding a place to stay. By day one, they were out. I and my fiancé were the front runners for this whole lease breaking business. Ex-boyfriend and sister were stressed enough and did not want to see each other. So fiancé and myself put on our big adult pants and dealt with the situation. Dealing with the situation included constantly reminding kid that the five of us need to vacate soon and he would need to find a place for himself. At this point, Kid was the only one living in the townhome and would have countless people over. It was a mess. A week before we were due to vacate, I let Kid know that it was his go time and he needed to get into action. I told him that I and fiance can and will definitely take care of Kid's things, but that would involve us throwing things out. He got very, very angry at that point. There was definitely tension between Kid and us four. Four days before we need to vacate, I unexpectedly had the day off from work and went to clean. 
When I got to the town home, it was trash. Guess who was still there? Guess who definitely did not find a place? Yep. And on the weekend before our 30 days was up, on a Friday night, right as the office closes at 5 p.m., three days before we had to move out, Kid informs me that he wants to stay in the town home. Okay, fine. I tell him to talk to the front office when they open on Monday because that's not my problem. That is his problem. If you're keeping track, that Monday he wanted to talk to him was the day before we were due to vacate. Beyonce and I tell the kid that he needs to be out by Monday and if, he's, if he is not gone by then, his stuff will be thrown out. Kid instead throws a fit during the middle of mine and Beyonce's workday. He says that he's talked to the front office. He says they gave him permission to stay. He says that he will only have to pay a prorated version of his rent, about 90%. He says his application was approved so he could stay. All in a text group chat as well. This is when my and fiance's aggressive side comes out. He knew what he was saying was a complete lie as fiance and I had both rented from other complexes and know the process of leaving. Fiance runs into my office. We both work in the same building under different management. He asks me when we are leaving to go to the front office of the townhome complex. I was already clocking off and gathering my things. We immediately talk to the manager. I show her messages of kids saying that he refuses to leave, that he was approved and allowed to stay. She confirms that he lied to us. She confirms that her office had received no such application. She then tells us that the only way a kid could continue to live there is to first vacate the home completely as he had signed a vacate notice 30 days ago. Second, pay the vacating fees, over $3,000. Third, reapply with his roommates and pay the security de deposit for the home, $1,700. All before 5 p.m. that following Thursday, August 1, 2019. I immediately request all of this in writing, preferably an email to all five of us that were on the lease. She agrees and also CCs the complex lawyer in on the email. This at least gave us a one-up in the legal situation, but Kid was still there. Kid thought that he could sell his car, get his part of the money back from our security deposit, and have enough for his deposit. He said in the group text, I waste my money, yeah, but when I need to get something done, I get it done. Now, before we went into the office, Kid was belittling me in a group text chat. He said many, many, many things to myself and to fiance, but a few stood out to me. He informed me that he could, in fact, take care of himself and he would be home or he would be homeless. I don't know how that makes sense, but okay. He informed me that I wasn't the only adult in the fucking world. You know what, kid, you're right about all of that. So, find his dad on Facebook and send him a message. I sent him screenshots. I sent him the email from the complex manager and lawyer. I kindly informed him that at this point, the only solution we have on the table is to call the police for a squatter situation. Dad answers back and is pissed. Dad apologized to me stating that he was sorry Kid became our problem. The next day, the final day to vacate, Kid's dad shows up at the townhouse door without warning and makes Kid clean out all of his crap while Dad watches. Fiance and I bought Dad a kid a, a bottle of Jack to thank him for finally taking care of our problem. Fiance drops the bottle off to Dad's address and got to personally thank Dad and witness Kid moving his crap into Dad's shed all while crying and getting into a screaming match with dad. After a whole month of endless stress, waiting for the police report, waiting to see if we would get our security deposit back, 
cleaning a house that would just get dirtier the next time around and having to watch sister and ex-boyfriend split. My family for the last 1.8 years was intense for fiance and I. I also learned that kid had lied about getting kicked out of his parents' house. He lied to everyone, including ex-boyfriend, from the very beginning of his story. But knowing that kid finally handled the situation himself made me sleep like a baby. Hope you learned, kid. Edit. Kid's family was slash is very complicated, and I don't want to say too much about it. He genuinely needs help and was in a rough shape or a rough spot when he slept on our couch. He helped around the house at that point in time. Please see comments for more. I can see now how his attitude contributed to the rough family situation, but when we first lived with him, we had no indication that he was like this. Fiance and I were too trusting from the very beginning. We had had several personal talks about how we will move forward with our next roommates. Man, how old was this kid? Did they say how old this kid was? Like, I'm probably sure they did, but... That is... turn. I think that's going to turn into a narcissist. Definitely. Oh. Those poor parents. Yeah, I feel bad for the parents in this situation, for sure. Entitled parent tries to take my dog because I abuse him? Okay, if any mods see this, please don't take it down. They wouldn't let me post this on Entitled Parents because my account isn't old enough. So as literally none of you know, this is my second post. And I have a black cockapoo named Max. He's the best. Here's what he looks like. He's pretty epic. But this one time, oh, oh boy. Let's meet our cast. Entitled parent, entitled daughter, Max, and me, a chair. On to the story. I was out walking Max at a field we have near our house. It was mostly empty, except for a few other dogs, which Max got along with, and a mother and her daughter. I bet my chair that you can guess who they are. So, after letting Max run around for a bit, I put him back on his lead and take him a lap round so he does his business before we go home. As I was walking him around, our two favorite demons show up. Entitled mom. Cute dog. Me. Being an awkward 13 year old. Uh, thanks. Entitled mom. So, how much for him? Whoa, <laughs> that went quick, didn't it? Yep. Me. Sorry. Uh, he's not for sale. Entitled mom. But my daughter wants him, don't you, honey? Entitled daughter. Yeah, I want him. Me. No, sorry. I'm not giving him away. Entitled mother. Why not? Entitled daughter starts getting a bit sad. Me. Because he's mine, and we've already paid a lot for him after he broke his leg. Entitled mother. You what? What kind of careless owner would do that? Max starts whining because he's scared or bored or... I don't know. I would ask him, but you know, being a dog and all. Entitled mom. Look, he's crying. I would be a much better owner to Max. Come here, sweetie. Come to mummy. Oh, okay, then. Max starts backing away. Entitled mom. Look, he's terrified. You probably abuse him and make him scared all the time. Just give me the dog. Me. No, he's scared because you're trying to take him away. Entitled mother. Just give me the damn dog. Snatches lead out of my hand and yanks Max. Poor doggo. Max starts yelping. Entitled mother. Come on, let's go home. Me. Pulls out phone. Give my dog back before I call the police. Entitled mother. Sure you will. Me. I call 123, which in England is a speaking clock. Hello, police? There's a woman here trying to take my dog away. Entitled mother. Okay, fine. Take him. And all was well. I admit, the daughter wasn't very entitled, but she was still there. Anyway, 
slow motion walk into sunset as screen fades to black. Credits roll down screen while upbeat music plays in the background. <laughs> yeah, that definitely be belonged in Entitled Parents and not Entitled Kids. Because I'm, I'm guessing that the daughter was probably really, really young. And anybody who was asked if they wanted a puppy when they're that young is going to say, yeah, they want it. So... <laughs> I stand for equal rights, but I'm allowed to be homophobic, and you can't hurt me after I hurt you, cause I'm a girl. Hey ya, so this happened a while ago, with this very entitled girl in my class. This isn't the first, nor the last story I have of her, but one of the worst ones. On mobile, English is not my first language. Cast, May, me, N, my closest friend, A and D. My classmates that spoke up during the whole thing. C, the entitled girl. Now, on to the story. C moved to town and became part of our class last year. Since then, it's been a bit of hell for my friends and I. She's clingy, rude, ignorant, and thinks she's the center of the universe. This was shown the most during a biology class last week. We were going for a walk in the forest during class and we were supposed to take pictures of things. I'm too lazy to explain the whole thing. I was walking and talking with N, A, and D. Keep in mind that D and A are boys and N is a girl and so am I. Then C comes up to us. C grabs my wrist and holds it while pushing herself past D to be able to walk next to me and yells, What are you talking about? Me getting anxious because I highly dislike when people I don't trust touch me and is being loud. Not much, just the project we're doing, and pulls my arm away from her. Then she starts this conversation about equal rights. Do you think lesbians should have the same rights as everyone else? Me. Of course, equal rights should be common sense. Everyone else who heard agreed. See. I stand for equal rights too, but the thing is that this girl in 9E is hugging me every once in a while and it makes me really uncomfortable. I think she might be a lesbian. I don't want people to believe I'm a lesbian because of her, and I hate when people touch me, so she's also invading my personal space. I don't want her around me. This. Oh, this made me shiver of anger. Let me see if I got that right. You're allowed to hug, hold hands with, and literally cling, cling to me and, and like a magnet. But if someone else does it, they're a lesbian and don't have the same rights as everyone else? Good one, C. Me. Tell her to stop then and don't make assumptions like that. N. Are you serious? Hugging someone doesn't mean they're a lesbian. May and I hug all the time but that's because we're close friends and trust one another. Me. And also, aren't you being really touchy as well? C. But I'm not a lesbian. She sounded legitimately sad. Meanwhile, A and D laughed so hard at what C had said, she made it sound like being lesbian was a virus. The conversation went on a little after that, but I have forgotten mostly of what else was said because I was so pissed and didn't want to listen. After arguing with her about it some more, class was over and we went to our lockers. C leaned against her locker, checking her phone. A, D, and a couple of my other classmates walk by her and she kicks A's leg, full force. A stumbles a bit forward but remains on his feet. He quickly turns to C, and since he's taller than her, he looked down at her, clenching his fists. C, you're not allowed to hit me. A, why the fuck not? C, because I'm a girl. Everyone who heard started laughing loudly as they had already heard of the whole argument from just minutes before. Me, <laughs> equal rights, huh? A just walked off and C came to us acting all sad and anxious about it, even though she put herself into that situation. 
We're still going through things like this on a mostly daily basis, and we're trying our best to ignore it. That was my first story about my entitled classmate. Sorry for possible grammar errors. I hope you enjoyed it, because I sure didn't. So, there's another part that, that this poster is written, so I'm gonna uh, just go on to that next one now. Update. Kinda. <laughs> Here we go again. Original post. Read it before this. Okay. So this is how it is. I'm on summer break right now. Going back to school in 20 days. This entitled kid will still be there, and she has stirred up drama with people in every other grade during this summer. But she talks to me and N from the last story like nothing has ever happened. Though, I have a little story to share about how I finally, after about half a year, had enough of her bullshit and snapped at her. Cast, me, also referred to as Wolf, figure that out yourself, N, my best friend, R, N's younger sister, one year younger than us. C, the entitled kid. T, K, and A, classmates. On to the story. It was the last day before summer break, meaning we all spent the day with our class and our mentors. Not sure if mentor is the right translation, but it's the two teachers that pretty much are responsible for the class and so on. Some classes were not even at the school that day. They were at a lake in the outskirts of town, or something, so there wasn't many people there at all, meaning we had parts of the school that was all empty. Our class used those parts to play, so my class decided to play hide-and-seek on the second floor of the school. Even our mentors joined in. One of our rules was that it would be everyone on their own, except for if you couldn't find a spot anywhere else except for where someone else already was. Everybody's happy, running off to hide. Some of my classmates even ran into the classrooms with other classes in them. Outside of N's sister's classroom, there is some lockers stood, so you can hide behind them. Hard to explain, sorry if it sounds weird or makes no sense. So I went in there, thinking it was a good spot since T, who was searching for us, probably didn't even know you could hide there. I look out to see if T had begun to look yet, and see A and K hide under a table a few meters away, with chairs surrounding them, and then I see N running by, looking lost. I hear T yell, she'll start looking, and I quickly motion for N to come over. Now you can barely fit two people behind the lockers, but we managed anyway. We are close friends, so we didn't mind standing huddled together, though suddenly, C comes up behind the lockers and sees us. That's when familiar hell starts. C, I'm hiding here with you. She didn't even ask if she could. N, sorry, but you can't. Wolf and I could barely fit here, and if one more person would be here, T would see, see us right away. C, with arms crossed and a bitchy look on her face. What's up with you two always ignoring me? You could have thought of finding a spot where I could fit too. Yeah, cause that's exactly how hide and seek works. Me. This isn't a team game, C. N is here because she came here before you and saw that there was space left. There's plenty of room for you elsewhere, I bet. C. No, I'm going to stand here where literally anybody walking by would see her and tell T you're here. Then I'm telling your mentors you're bullying me again. That was when I lost it. Me, raising my voice. Could you fucking cut it out for one goddamn day? C was clearly taken aback by us not letting her have her way. But then she laughed at me. C, you're funny when you're angry. Another reason for me to stay. Me, you're just going to ruin the game for everyone by doing this. T could be here at any second, so I'm asking you to please play the game properly and hide somewhere else. Then R comes out of her classroom and notices C. R. Hey, what's up? She then sees me and N. Oh, you're playing hide and seek? N and I nod. C shakes her head, putting on a face, making her look like she's going to cry. C. They aren't letting me hide with them. Your sister is a bully. R clearly wasn't having any of her bullshit. N. R. 
Please make C go somewhere else. We want to play the game in peace, but she won't let us. R nods and grabs C's arm to lead her away. R, I'm going to go to the cafeteria. Come on, C. At this point, we start to wonder where T has been all this time since the second floor isn't that big. Though it turns out, she stopped to talk to her friend on the way. So we peek out from behind the lockers to see R and C walk down the stairs, and A pushing a chair aside from under the table, giving her the middle finger. Luckily, she had her back turned towards him. A and K heard it all, but didn't want to give away their hiding spot to defend us. I hate those guys sometimes. <laughs> well, that's how it went. One of the encounters with her that was a bit longer and more annoying. I'll probably get more this upcoming year, and if I do, I'll make sure to update y'all about it. Thanks for reading. Oh god. Oh, I've... They don't grow up, either. I've had jobs where there's people like this as an adult that just, they need attention constantly and you can't get any of your own work done because they need to be there just, they're like parasites. Ugh. What do they call them? Like social vampires. Entitled kid tries to take my dog, causing permanent injury to my dog. Hello guys, this just happened recently and I made a Reddit account just for this. Not sure if it belongs in Entitled People or this. I'm also not that good at telling stories and usually leave out details. People in the story, me, dad, my favorite parent, dash, purebred AKC yellow laboratory retriever. I think that's supposed to be Labrador retriever. Entitled kid, entitled dad, and nice mom. Basically, I have a dog named Dash. I'll provide a photo at the end. And he's around one year and three months. We live in a somewhat small town in Minnesota with around 40,000 people living there. I'm moving to a town with 10,000 now. So basically, me, Dad, and my amazing dog were at Kiwanis Recreation Area, a somewhat long drive, but it's worth it. We went to the smaller dog park area because they were reconstructing the larger one. The smaller dog park area had a lot more trees and less open room because it was made for smaller dogs. Me and my dad usually let Dash wander anywhere in the dog park, fenced in area, because he's usually fine and me and my dad just talk about sports. While talking to my dad, I noticed two parents and a child walking in with a French bulldog. I'm guessing was a puppy because it was really small. Right off the bat, the kid was complaining about how he didn't want to be there and just the whole mile. We were the only people there because it was early in the day and most people were at work. The mother also held a small bulldog because she didn't want it to get hurt or anything, I, I don't know why she did, and didn't let it run around and play with other dogs. The kid only stopped complaining once he saw my beautiful Labrador Retriever. Just to tell you right now, my dog's nose and eyes weren't black, so he wouldn't go into any dog shows. The color of my dog's eyes were like the color of his fur, really beautiful eyes. The kid went straight for my dog and started to pet him. I didn't really mind as most people like to pet him. Don't wear a hat when you're petting him, he likes to jump up and take them. Then the kid started to hit him kind of hard, probably because he was like seven and didn't really care. Instantly, I walk up and tell him not to do that as it hurts the dog, and the dog might defend itself and bite you. I was kind of afraid my dog would bite him because I don't want him put it down. But the kid doesn't listen, and my dog lays on his back trying to tell him to stop, you win, aka backing down. But no, this kid legit then decided to kick my dog after I told him to stop. He also kicked him near his weak leg as he got hit by a bicycle on that leg and got hurt badly. The, the broke my dog's leg. I didn't know that until later. I pushed this kid over yet I'm way older than him and checked if my dog's okay. The entitled dad saw this and ran over saying, what do you think you're doing? I responded while yelling, your kid was attacking my dog. 
His wife tries to calm him down as she saw him kick my dog's foot looking over. But the dad wouldn't listen, threaten he'd sue for assaulting my son and harassing him. I was speechless on how entitled the dad was as well. My dad came over, yelling at me first as he saw me throw the kid to the side, but saw how hurt our dog was. My dad picked up my dog, but the entitled dad tried to stop him, but the nice mom grabbed entitled dad and held him back. Me and my dad went to the vet, finding out that his leg is broken, the femur. Sadly, me and my dad were too stupid to not get their info, because in the heat of the moment, we only cared about our dog, not an entitled parent and a kid. I'm not the greatest at telling stories, but here's the pictures. If you have any more questions, I'll answer them gladly. Oh, he's such a cute doggo. Edit. My dog has to wear a small brace now and stay at home most of the time. I also forgot to say the kid was trying to get my dog to come with him and he wouldn't listen and that's when he started to hit him. I'm legit so dumb. Oh my god. You know, usually it's the mom in, in these stories that tries to take the dog away, but this time there's no Karen. There is no Karen. Wow. This is becoming like an on ongoing trend with people trying to take other people's dogs. I, I don't get it. Get your own fucking dog. What the hell? <laughs> Mummy, I want her drum. Hello. This is my first post on this subreddit. I feel like I need to give some context before I start this story. I live in Northern Ireland, and I am in an accordion marching band. A lot of bands here consist of only one instrument. I apologize if it sounds strange to anyone not from here. After large parades, there is usually a field set up for bands to rest after parading. These attract spectators too, as they have stalls, food, and other amenities. Of course, at a large entertainment events, there is bound to be entitled children. After an exceptionally long parade, most of my band had left to seek food. I agreed to watch the instruments as they went, as I felt sickly after such a long walk. Soon enough, Entitled Kid decided to introduce himself after running at very high speeds towards quite expensive instruments by taking the sticks of a bass drum and beginning to beat it rather hard. Startled, I snapped at him. Hey, put that down! The child looked confused and began to cry. His mother soon approached, asking him what was the matter. Between him bumbling cries, I understood him trying to accuse me of shouting at him for not letting him use the bass drum. The mother, surprisingly understanding, tried to explain he wasn't allowed it, with a suspicious lack of the word no in his explanations. Entitled Kid became furious lifting the drumsticks and beating the drum much harder than it was designed to be hit, leaving dents in the bass drum skin. She lightly tried to restrain him, asking if he could just play it for a while with a painful smile. I explained that no, he can't, it's band property, and that we can't afford to let it break as we had no spare drum skins and several other parades to participate in that very month. Not letting go of the sticks, he becomes engulfed in a tantrum, red-faced, crying and screaming at the notion of the word no. I begin to get frustrated and try to take the sticks from the boy's hands. The mother becomes defensive, accusing me of harassing her child, saying the force was unnecessary. Regardless, I retrieve the sticks, keeping them close to me and allow the annoyed mother to dra drag her screaming child away as the rest of the band noticed the commotion and began to approach again. Wow. There's something to be said about a woman that's too scared to stand up to her own kid. Like, maybe you shouldn't be breeding? Perhaps? I don't know. That's just my opinion. And of course, everyone has one, right? That's gonna be scary when that kid grows up. EK kisses my girlfriend and thinks he's boss. This is my first post, so I hope it's not bad. So this happened in third grade, 
I know, I know. So this entitled kid, who I really don't like, did a lot of things to tick me off. So I had a girlfriend at the time, two year streak, and we were in different classes, so we didn't see each other much. An entitled kid was in that class, but it wasn't a big deal. I was nine, so I didn't think much about it. One day, my girlfriend came up to me at recess and said entitled kid kissed her. It wasn't an all out tongue war, just a small, simple kiss on the cheek. And like any boyfriend, I was mad. I went up to entitled kid and said, you like kissing girls? Well, don't kiss mine. I wish I didn't say that, so for the rest of the year, all the third grade kids were saying all about how Entitled Kid is hooked up with my girlfriend. Three months later, someone told my girlfriend I was cheating on her with a girl from the second grade. No way. So we broke up. So fast forward to fifth grade. My ex-girlfriend is now my girlfriend. At recess, Entitled Kid was playing football, and there are these grass areas on two sides. That was TD area, and a pole was on each side, right? You see where I'm going with this. Entitled Kid is running really fast, not looking where he's going, and runs right into the pole. And like the 11-year-old he was, starts crying, blood running down his face, looks at the ground and sees the blood dripping from his chin and passed out. One thing I forgot to tell you about the pole is that at the bottom of it has a round cement thing. So when he fell, he hit his head on it and more blood. So an ambulance came after a few minutes and was sent to the hospital. Two months later, he says he still has my girlfriend. Ten seconds later, my girlfriend come and kisses me on the cheek. So Entitled Kid and I never spoke again. That was kind of hard to read, so I'm going to assume that this kid is still in grade school yeah um sucks that that kid got hurt but maybe uh, he'll learn for not sexually assaulting other people <laughs> i don't know probably not do you know who my dad is you should let me die i work in a place where customers come to me to collect things we have a large walk-in freezer to keep some of the items frozen before pickup this is a large metal room, which large metal bars and the place to hold items. Due to it very rarely turned off and us walking in from the rain a lot, there is basically a thick layer of ice on the ground. On the warmer or wetter days, it's basically a slip and slide. Due to this, we have to wear clothing that keeps us warm. The room is kept around minus 27 degrees Celsius and special boots that stick into the ice and give us grip. A customer comes up. I know him as he works for the same company, so I am briefly talking to him before I get him to his item. I turn around and see that his small kid is walking into the above-mentioned room. We have a thick metal door to insulate the room, and he has opened it and is about to enter. I quickly move to block him and tell him that he can't go in there. He looks at me with a smug and annoyed look and says, Do you even know who my dad is? And still tries to go in. I block the doorway and thankfully the father comes in and gets him. It may not seem like a big deal. It is just a freezer. But if the kid had walked in there, the more than likely he would have fallen on the ice. Due to the thick metal walls and loud fans, you can't hear anything in there from the outside. Even when the door is open. A few minutes in there, especially if you are on the ground, slash ice, could be a serious damage. I and the father usually chat for a few minutes if I have no other customers. And if he had not noticed him walk in, this could have been very bad. You know, those, it's true, those ice chests, I used to be a manager at a very large seafood ran franchise in Canada, and, uh... Anytime I needed to vent, if, if I got pissed off by a customer or anything, anytime I needed to just scream, I would just go walk into the walk-in freezer and just let out my aggression there because nobody could hear you. <laughs> Boy hitting on me by calling me a faggot. I was dating a girl who I wanted to break up with, but her birthday was coming up, so I didn't. 
I'm typing this two days after her birthday, and I am bi. I am a female. I was on Instagram. Follow me at nanny underscore ima underscore potato underscore 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 etc. And I got a text in my DMs. It was from a guy who just posts stuff about Fortnite. He asks me if I was single. I said no and that I'm bi. He then responds with an eww. He sent me a picture of his face and he was cute, I'm not gonna lie. He said, you like what you see? I said no, even though I kinda did. And then started calling me a faggot and told me that he wishes that I would be raped in my sleep. I then cursed him out and then blocked his ass. If he was nice and sweet, then it would have been all good. I did break up with my girlfriend, if y'all are wondering. Okay, I'm assuming they're both probably uh, preteens. I'm gonna assume, or teenagers, but yeah, that's pretty cringy. It's almost, it's almost like r slash nice guys. Ugh. What is... Mm, society's getting fucked up, man. Oh, you... Alright, my dudes, that's all I've got for you today. I know this is a super long video, but, um... I probably won't be touching Entitled Kids too, too much. And I just, uh, I wanted to get a long video out there that had a, a lot of different stories. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification to be notified when I have future videos coming out with this kind of content. And as always, r slash Reddit Fairy. If you want to submit your stories, head on over there and submit them there. And you never know, might show up in the next video. All right, you guys, have a good one. I will see you in the next video.